Hey, what's up, everyone? Thanks for coming by. This is Whistlekick Martial Arts Radio, episode 353. Today, we're going to talk about the controversial, the debatable subject, the question. When are you and aren't you a martial artist? My name is Jeremy Lesniak. I'm your founder for the show. I'm the founder at Whistlekick. I'm a passionate martial artist, and I love sharing that passion with all of you twice a week, as well as with the number of products and projects that we've got going on. You can find all of them at whistlekick.com. And if you choose to buy something, don't forget the code PODCAST15 to save 15%. It's our way of thanking you for spreading the show and spreading the word about all these things that we're trying to do to make the traditional martial arts bigger and better. If you want to find the show notes, those are at whistlekickmartialartsradio.com. We've got links and photos and videos and more content than you can shake a stick at. And I'm not really sure how useful shaking a stick at a bunch of podcasts would be, but you can do it. Maybe you can shake a bow or an escrima. So today's subject actually came from an email. I, I received a email from an anonymous, well, not anonymous, but stripping the name off from a listener. And he said, hey, Jeremy, how do you tell when you're a martial artist? I've always wondered that, you know, if you didn't get to colored belts, you know, you're just a white belt. Are you still a martial artist? Maybe this is something you can put on your Thursday show. And I wrote back, hmm, tell me more. I think I know where you're going with your question, but I'm not sure. And he wrote back, are you still a martial artist if you decide to stop training it White belt, or yellow belt, or blue belt. Is there a line? And I said, okay, now I get it. And he wrote back again. He said, you know, I could go to a Taekwondo school and learn a, a few things, but does that make me a martial artist? I can take a month of Krav Maga. Does that make me a martial artist? And I love this question. I love this subject. And you know why I love it the most? There's no right answer. I'm going to tell you what I think. And my goal today, is that you think, that you consider the question, that you consider what for you is a martial artist. How do you define it? And are you exemplifying your own definition? Because that's the key. We all need our personal code. And if you define yourself as a martial artist, you should be living as a martial artist. Now, I haven't said it on the show much lately, but there was about 50 episodes in there where it seemed like it came up every episode. To me, martial arts is personal development through the lens, the perspective of hand-to-hand -hand combat. Thus, a martial artist is someone who engages in that personal development through the practice of hand-to-hand -hand combat. Pretty straightforward, pretty simple. But if I am not at this moment practicing, does that mean I am not a martial artist? Well, I don't think it has to be that extreme because none of us can practice 24-7. But is there an expiration? Is there a time limit? What if I've stopped training for a year? Some would say that I'm no longer a martial artist. If I've gone to one class and never gone back, and it's been a year, I think most people would say, you're not a martial artist. But what if I've trained for 50 years and I stopped training for a year? Am I no longer a martial artist? What if I become injured and I want to train, but I can't physically train? What if I practice movements in my mind? Does that retain me the title of being a martial artist? Now, I love martial arts. I don't think there's any doubt about that. And I'm guessing that most of you do too. Most of you love martial arts and define yourself as a martial artist. Maybe not at the entire definition of who you are. Maybe you're also a spouse or a parent. All of us are children. When we think of the things that would define our personality, our being, 
for quite a few of us, martial artists is going to be in the top few on that list, that definition of what makes you, you. I know for me, it's one of the top three, maybe even the top one. It can depend on the day. We've put out a number of kind of quotes and motivational items on our social media. Instagram is actually the best place for most of those, at Whistlekick. If you haven't started following us, you should. But one of my favorite quotes, I don't know that it's a quote because I don't know where it came from. I started saying it, but I'm sure I'm not the first. Martial arts isn't what I do, it's who I am. And when you've trained for a long time, and you meet someone else who was also trained for a long time, you can feel it. There are people that I've met who are incredibly humble in the way they present themselves. And maybe I meet them in a martial arts context, and maybe they're wearing a low-ranked belt. And something about them just doesn't, doesn't add up. This person isn't a blue belt. And you ask them, hey, um, did you train in anything before you started, uh, let's say, Kempo? Oh, yeah. You know, I, I spent 30 years in Shotokan Karate. Oh, okay. <laughs> that adds up now. Because you can feel it. Martial arts leaves an indelible mark on who you are. And I've said on the show a number of times, martial arts is the only thing that you could do for, say, six months and receive a lifetime of benefits. Now, that doesn't mean that if I'm eight years old and I do six months of Taekwondo, that I'm a martial artist forever and always. But it does mean that I am more of a martial artist than someone who has never trained. You see, to me, being a martial artist is part of a spectrum. And on one end of the spectrum, we have someone who has never trained, someone who has never engaged in martial arts practice, someone who doesn't have any interest in martial arts. And on the other end, you've got someone who trains five, six, seven days a week. Maybe they have a school. Maybe it's what they do when they get up in the morning and what they do when they get home from work. Maybe it defines not only who they are, but everything about them. And I know people like this. People who have been actively competing for 30, 40 years. People who travel the world sharing their knowledge. People who, if martial arts was taken away from them, would probably die. Because they wouldn't know what to do without it. In the same way that most of us wouldn't know what to do without breathing. So if we consider that spectrum, we all fall somewhere on that spectrum and we all define that line, that tipping point of what makes us a martial artist differently. And not only do I think that's okay, I think that's important. There are moments, I will confess, where I struggle with my role as a martial artist. I don't have the time to train the way I want to. I still train. I train most days. But my training is not as extensive as I would like it to be. And sometimes I feel guilty about that because of not only how I define on the spectrum that tipping point of what a martial artist is, but the tipping point of where I feel I want to be. Now, this is a pretty similar discussion to the idea of what constitutes martial arts. And I've made my opinion on that subject very well known. And I'll repeat it here. No one has the right to tell someone that what they are doing is not martial arts. Because it is so entirely subjective and none of us have the objective right to say something is or is not martial arts. 
if it works for you and everybody in the equation is happy, then do it. Now, there are some things that by obvious definition are not martial arts. If I'm playing soccer, I'm not doing martial arts. And how do we know that? Because we're calling it soccer. But guess what? I could take a dozen of you, put you on a soccer field, dress you up in a uniform, put belts on you, and I can teach you martial arts skill using that soccer ball. I can run a class on a soccer field with soccer balls, and we could call it martial arts. It'd be ridiculous, but we could still check the boxes that work in most martial arts. And thus, we could do the same thing. We can make the same argument about a martial artist. Now, if you've gotten this far into the episode, you might be getting frustrated with my wishy-washy, my refusal to draw a line in the sand. So I'm going to tell you my own personal view of what a martial artist is. I don't know if I need to reiterate that this is my opinion and that you are not only entitled to yours, but should have one of your own. And it does not have to be the same. And I will not fault you if yours is different, even dramatically different. If we meet some time for a beer or a cup of coffee, maybe we chat about it. Because I want to hear what you think. But this is what I think. A martial artist is someone who has trained physically in the martial arts recently, as they define recently, has every intention, honestly, to engage in that physical practice again soon, however they define soon, and is currently engaged in the application of the lessons that they have learned as a martial artist. Let me unpack that a little bit. To say it a simpler way, you trained, you're going to train again, and you're working on the stuff you learned while you were training. The physical piece is pretty obvious. We, whether we go to a class or we train on our own, we've got the physical component to what we're working on that we are attempting to better. But it's that, that last piece, that application of what you're learning piece that I think is the most critical. And I say that because I've known folks who are confined to wheelchairs that I 100% define as martial artists. There are people who are martial artists that are in a coma right now. Have they stopped being a martial artist? I know people who did not die. They've been on this show because they were martial artists and they went through something amazing in a physical sense, something traumatic. If they were not a martial artist, they would not have survived that situation. And in those cases, what were they applying? They were applying their strength of will. In some schools, it's referred to as indomitable spirit. Their refusal to give up, their insistence on living their lives. One of the lessons I'm working on right now is my refusal to let the criticism of people who do not matter affect me. It's something that when I think about it, I first started learning as a child in karate. Some of the other kids who were lower ranked than me would mock me for practicing or for my skill or for my really loud, passionate ki eyes. And as someone who grew up socially awkward and unaccepted, that was really difficult for me. And guess what? I'm still working to apply that lesson. I've gotten better, but I'm still working on it. Martial arts and a martial artist, I think at the end of the day, is something that defies definition. You know it when you see it. And in doing that, in saying that, it's subjective. And I'm okay with that. 
I don't think everything needs to be defined clearly. I don't think everything needs to have a standard set upon it. And if you do, that's okay. I think that's what I got on this. I want to thank the listener for writing in. If you have questions or ideas for topics, I would love to hear them. In fact, we haven't done a Q&A in a while. I would love to do another Q&A. So go on, send me an email, jeremy at whistlekick.com, or find us on social media, at Whistlekick, Facebook, Twitter, YouTube, Instagram. Head on over to whistlekick.com and use the code PODCAST15 to save some money on a shirt or some gear or a uniform, a hoodie. What else we got over there? There's a bunch of stuff. Check it out. All right. I'm going to go sit with a cup of tea now that I've put myself into this contemplative mood that makes it hard to think and speak even more so. I hope you have a wonderful day. And until next time, train hard, smile, and have a great day.